putting a pause on Banksy Gold production. This is one of the craziest seasons I've had in 12 years of mining on the Bering Sea. It is 5.30 a.m. We're supposed to have a stretch of clean weather. Instead, we're doing a dredge rescue. I lost my job and my boat is sinking. It's gonna cost me $100,000 to rebuild the pontoons. Our dive team is pretty inexperienced. We picked up the camera ourselves and this is our story. Oh, the love is Hello. Three, two, four, one. You know you didn't get any gold when we've all checked the van multiple times <laughs> for that missing bucket. Before we can even dream about gold in our sluice box, we have a huge job ahead of us. A $100,000 overhaul of the dredge. After 12 years on the water, this boat don't float. The current pontoons have two major problems. First, they're not big enough to hold the weight of the dredge. The deck is dangerously close to the water, and we can't add any more weight to the deck. Second, they're leaking like a sieve. If we don't fix them now, we're gonna sink. It would take us months to do this project in Nome. So we're building it with Dan Rainwater right here in Homer, Alaska, and shipping the pieces north for final assembly in the spring. We wanted to use one piece of aluminum and bend it into this U shape. The reason I wanted to do that is it saves so much time to bend a sheet of aluminum compared to fitting two pieces together and welding it on both sides. This line here represents the old pontoons. Okay, that's how small they are. And then this is the new one, it's more than double. Everything is in six foot sections. So that, that gave us our designs. Every piece is gonna be six feet from front to back. Uh, we're using Simeon's shop to do the big Bending. It's got that big scary break. This area is what you have today. Right. And then this is, we're adding this much more. So your water line should be about here. Okay. So of course this is all upside down, but uh, this is how much you should have sticking out of the water. Which means if you doubled your weight, the water would be here. And you're still oh, not wow. sinking. You're just close to sinking. Um, so we could just put like a, like a much bigger motor on there, much bigger hose, much bigger, bigger cabin. More fuel. Right, what this, um, what this gives us is just a lot of options. These things are going to be huge, but it's definitely gonna fix our problem of being too low in the water. We still have to fit the bulkheads, frame them out, and build a totally custom bow shape. As we're jamming them all, we're gonna have two things to consider. Is the top in the right spot? And is that weldable? Each bulkhead goes into this notch, which is three inches forward from our seam. And that will allow me access to weld the seam on the inside and on the outside. Should fit. Look at that. Beautiful. That is fantastic. We want to go down in here, use it for storage. Put our batteries down there, put our extra backup pumps and everything. So we did this, we got a hatch that's gonna go in here. One of our bulkhead walls, we had to design uh, to have this, this cutout. I know. <laughs> it's actually quite climbable. As long as you don't become a fatty bum baddie. Really quick, just wanted to give a special thanks to Lincoln Electric. I've been using Lincoln welders for five years since I got my first Ranger. Gold mining is a business of metal and dirt. And while we're experts at digging around in the dirt, Lincoln's always had our back when it comes to metal, whether it's steel or aluminum.
Here's your keel. There'll be one right in the middle. And then I'll additionally put one here and one here and one all, all, on all these V shapes. Just to make sure that it, it stabilizes yeah. the pontoon. Exactly. You frame it so that you can hit a, a rock or a reef and not sink. That's it. Right. And you just don't want your outboards to go underwater. So we're, we're framing it in a way that is strong enough to take impact, but not extra heavy. Eyes. It's not auto darkening, so you'll have to flip it down every time you want to see yeah. the well. Eyes. Eyes. One more. Here's the bow stuff. We're gonna give it two and a half inches over 33 of an angle to get that bow looking forward. And then from there, we're gonna have this curve. We're gonna cut right here, all the way back to here. So we're gonna cut both these sides loose and just bring them together. This is my cut line. So these will come over and this will help. You got that? Yeah. Framing out the bow extremely heavy so that um, Ellie can stab other boats. Super pointy to, to slice into the waves. And then in this section here, we framed it out extremely strong. So we got all these frames here, and here and here and here. That way you, you can hit things and, and they won't just crumple. The frames that we're using up in the bow have this bend on it, and they're deeper than the rest. So these are extra strong compared to the rest of the boat. This is where the damage could potentially happen. And then down here, we upgraded our keel. That's a 3 8 thick keel bar there. And then these are all 3 16 frames with bends on them. And they're cut to that curve to, to follow the hull. We're gonna additionally put a big old keel bar down right in here. It'll be a big half inch plate that I'll be down and more through this flat bar connecting to this. This section right up in the front is called the crash bulkhead. So we'll have a, a bulkhead here and from here forward, everything is designed to crash. So it's just like the front of your car that's got a bumper. This is the bumper. Now it's time to package them up and get them to Nome. Unfortunately for our wallets, the only fast travel to Western Alaska is by plane. All right, what's the damage? The damage is $12,010. 22 cents. Oh it hurts. man, twelve thousand dollars to ship our pontoons up, and that we would have saved so much money on the barge, but then we would have lost also so much money because they wouldn't have gotten there till you know the end of June. But hey, you know what? I feel happy and excited that the pontoons are on their way. We didn't know what to expect when we got on the plane in Anchorage. After getting slammed with Murbach in the fall. Nome proceeded to have one of the coldest springs on record. Temperatures dropped to 30 below in April, and Nome got buried under record levels of snow. Oh, dude. We had the bad luck of parking where all the snow drifts went. Oh, man, the starboard side is bad. I'd say six to eight feet. Floor is solid ice. It's slow going. Aside from digging out, we can't even find gold until the sea ice is gone. And with record cold temperatures, that means we might get stuck on land for a while. This is a little solid looking. The best part of the gold mining season is the early summer. That's when the weather is the most calm, the visibility is the best. And if we can't get out there and take advantage of that, that means we had the most expensive preseason in history and we're not gonna make it back. Thanks so much for watching. So this season might have been filmed a year ago, but if you wanna know what's going on right now, you gotta sign up for our weekly newsletter. The link is in the description if you're watching on YouTube, and it's in the comments if you're on Facebook. So we've been writing the newsletter for over a year, and we've just had so much fun just sharing stories with you guys and thoughts and just talking about our, our lives up in Nome. Don't forget to sign up for a newsletter because once you do, you get 10% off your very first purchase at BeringSeaPater.com. And you can buy our gold from our sluice box, either buy the gram in a vial, or you can get it in pay dirt form and pan it yourself. Check out this little bonus scene we have for you where we have a conversation about what to do with all the extra aluminum from our old pontoons. Let us know what you think.
But you're gonna have a huge stack of aluminum. The old pontoons. Oh, I know it. Which I know. we I can build that. like an ice shack. An ice shack. We make a dredge. I think we cut them up and you, you <laughs> autograph them and we sell them on the website. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's so That's bad. like selling pieces of the Berlin Wall. I think we stack them up and then put a roof over the top and it's, a, it's just another covered shed. What, what, what about turning it into like an Airbnb? Oh, an Airbnb. Can we charge yeah. an exorbitant yeah. cleaning fee? $40 yeah. to book, $1,000 to clean. That's pretty cool.